Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how to create some materials and how to assign them to our objects today. We're going to be using the Material X. Okay, I have a rough scene that I've created here with a bunch of different poly objects. Okay, what's really important to remember is that what we're going to be covering right now is going to encompass mental ray rendering, not the Maya software renderer. So what we have to do is we have to come up here, we have to click on our render, render settings option. And once we click on render settings and open up the window, you'll see there's a render layer. Underneath that, it says render using. We have to make sure we click, we go down and click mental ray. Now, this is actually perfect. You'll notice on mine right now, mental ray is not there. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to bring up mental ray. That's really weird that it's not there because usually it is. So to bring that up, we're going to come down here to window. Okay, and um, give me a second. I need to remember exactly how I got this up last time here. It was, let me see, thank you sir, I showed it to you guys once before, and under rendering editors, um, one second, so we're going to go down under window, we're going to drop down to settings and preferences, okay, and we're going to go to plugin manager, so that's window, setting preferences, plugin manager, it's going to bring up this plugin manager window, this plugin manager has a series of scripts in here that are checked. We're looking for one. It's called Maya Tomar. It's down here on the bottom right here. You see this? Maya Tomar, T-O-M-R. If I go over and click load, and I click auto load, and hit close now, okay, and I go back over, and I open up my render settings window, I will have the option of mental ray in there now. Do you see that? So for any reason you don't have mental ray, I'll walk you through that again. If mental ray is not up here under render, render settings in your render selections, okay, it's really easy. You come back over under window, setting preferences, you go to plugin manager, you bring that up, you scroll down, and now in this version of Maya they've actually separated it and put Maya Tamar separate here. Before they used to list it in the middle. Why they call it Maya Tamar and not Mental ray rendering option? I have no idea. Yeah, the same problem. yeah, so this happens all the time. Well, I don't know why they call it Maya Tamar, but you just hit load and auto load there. You can hit refresh, hit close, and then when you go down and you and you open up your render settings, you'll have the option to select mental ray. We want to have mental ray selected. Okay? Now I already showed you guys how to do the direct sunlight, right? The physical sun and sky. So let's start with that one, and we'll use that one. And then I'm also going to show you today how to use under indirect lighting. There's another one here called image-based lighting. Okay, so since I've already showed physical sun and sky, I'll go, come back to that in a minute. I'm going to go ahead and start with image-based lighting. I'm going to hit create. Okay, and you'll, if I, you look in my set right now, you will see I have this dome around my whole entire model. Do you see that? That's great, because what that dome is is it allows me to come in here and it allows me to add an image to that dome and whatever I render will get the reflection of the image around it. Ooh, that's pretty cool, right? That can be a huge benefit to me. On this project though, on the Super Soaker Rifles, you're more likely to probably just use the physical sun and sky, but I wanted to go ahead and show this to you. So how do I load, if I click render right now and look, okay, I have just a black background, nothing's really there, right? But if I come over here under image name, Okay, when I have that dome selected, then when the attributes are open. So I have that dome selected under the attribute editor. I have the opportunity here. There's a file folder right there for image name. If I select that, it's going to ask me to bring up a file. Okay, I went onto my desktop and I grabbed two images from Google. I just typed in California sunset. So I'm going to select this now. Okay, I'm going to go desktop here. Okay, I'm going to scroll down here. I'm going to find my image. It's called California Beach 1. So I'm going to look down here. California Beach 1 sets it. Hit open. It's now attached. Look at my monitor. You see what it's done? It's attached that wonderful texture around that whole entire sphere. Do you see that? So now when I render, anything I render is going to be influenced by that sphere. And also, I'm going to get that sphere in the background. Okay? So... Uh, we'll come back to that in a minute because what happens right now if I save my file and go back and open that at home this image is going to be gone. Why? Because this image right here, the California Beach 1 JPEG is on my desktop. It's not where? In my project files. 
So if I were to come over to my project files, and I, mine was on, in this location here, if I were to go to classes, ACG 104, under new photo, material X here, if I come down here, I have an image folder here. So if I click this open right now, grab my two images here, anytime I take that project file with me, I have my images already there. And Maya will know how to find it. So if I open up Maya right now, okay, watch what's going to happen. Okay, so here I'm going to come in here. I'm going to go File. I'm going to save my scene as. Okay, let's go to Desktop. <laughs> um, <coughs> excuse me for a second. Let me go back to Classes. This is where I have my folder here, Material X Demo. I have it. I save under Scenes, right? I'm going to click Material X Demo 1, hit Save As. Okay, yes. Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to close my file now after I've saved. Um, yes, I just hit save. Okay, there it is. I'm going to open up my file again. I'm going to go back to classes. I'm going to go to 104, new folder, material X. Okay. And I'm going to grab my scenes there. I'm going to grab and drag that onto Maya. Okay. It's going to open up my file in Maya here. Okay. One second, Chris. Now that I open it, look what's happened. My image isn't there, right? It's not there because it remembered it being on my desktop and I moved it. So what I do is I click on that back sun. I'm going to go back. I'm going to reload the image. I click on the file here. I come back. I'm going to take Maya to where I put it in my image folder. Desktop, Classes, 104, right? And I had it right here, Material X. I had it under Images. And now I can select the image right here. Boom. So now if I save it, Maya is going to know where the file is again. It's in my folder. That's what's really important about having a project folder. As we get more advanced in Maya, you might have Mel scripts, you might have textures, bump maps, whatever you have is going to be locked inside of that folder. So you want to start carrying that folder around with you. Okay? So watch. Let's see what happens now if I go to render. Look at what happened. I got a sky in my background, right? Pretty cool. Okay? So. For right now, that's image based lighting. That's some basics there. I'm going to go in now and I'm going to show you guys the hyper shade. Okay? So let's talk about how we get the hyper shade up. If I come over here and I go under Windows, I'm going to go down over here to Rendering Editors. So Window, Rendering Editors, and I'm going to slide over right here and I'm going to pull up the hyper shade. Okay? Hyper shade sounds pretty cool, huh? Sounds like the name of a bike. Hyper shade. Okay, I have my hyper shade open. Now, <coughs> there's some other base materials in here. Materials are objects that I could assign to part of my render, okay, and I could tell it what I want the materials to be. So let me give you a couple of base materials that have been used for years in Maya, okay. One is called a Lambert, okay. So if I come over here and look in the top of my menu, I have a Lambert there. I have another one called the Blin. Can you see that little Lambert, the little sphere? It's sort of a matte shaped sphere, which means anytime I use a Lambert, I'm going to get a matte shaped finish. If I have something that isn't supposed to be really detailed, I could go in and I can use a Lambert. So let me click Lambert real quick. Okay? I'm also going to click Blend right now. Okay? And you'll see over here on the side of my hypershade, I have this little window right here. I have a window up here that allows me to select textures, rendering, lights, and I can select materials. It tells me the materials I've created. Down here, this is my workspace. I'm not going to get into this in this particular class right now, but when you get into more advanced level of modeling and texture, your workspace window is important because when you have textures assigned, textures will be down here in the work area as a separate little bar, and you can have lines attached to these textures indicating that certain objects are being affected by a texture. And that's more for a texturing class. Right now, we're going to stick with basic materials, OK? So I just created this Lambert right here in a blend. I'm going to go in. I could label my Lambert. I can do that by clicking on it, OK? And it, if I double click on it, it brings up the attribute editor for that particular object, OK? I should say for that texture. So now I could come in here. I can double click color. I could change colors. I can pick established colors. Let's start with like a, a green right now, okay? I can add a black in there. I can add to the solid color. I can go to dark black. I can move this around and I've, hey, if I hit done, look at what happened to my Lambert. My Lambert has changed colors, right? 
So let's go do the same thing for my blend now. I'm going to click on my blend, double click on it. So look at what happens if I don't have my attribute editor. Once I double click on the object, okay, inside the hypershade window, it automatically opens up the attribute editor for that object. And I've, we've already opened up the attribute editor before. Remember, we opened it up to get physical sun and sky. We've opened it up to do any attribute changes on an object, whether it's something vertices or something we're modifying, right? So by double-clicking blend now, and if I come over here and I go to color, I double-click color, right? I'm going to select the same green right now. Okay, hit done. Actually, it was slightly off. Let me assign the same one here. That's about the same. Done. Okay, they're about the same there. So what I'm going to do now is with this window open, this is called a floating window. We don't always want to leave that window open because it's the computer's using memory to have this window open right now, right? Okay. Actually, you'll notice I did a little mistake there. Okay. Um, I assigned a color to the default, the default selection setting that when we model in is a gray. You see that? And I accidentally changed that gray to green. So to change that back, I'm going to click it. That was my mistake. I'm going to check color. I'm going to go back to the gray setting that I had, which I believed was right there. So here's the Lambert I created that I wanted to change to green. I'm going to hit done. Okay. So um, let's try that again. Double click this. Color. Um, that's pretty good. Hit done. There. So now you look, the la you, whenever you model that gray that you see in the shaded area, shaded area, by pressing 5, right, in Maya is a base Lambert. Okay? So now we created a new Lambert, we assigned it green. When I want to assign this to an object, I, there's a couple different ways I can do that. One is I can middle mouse button, drag that, and I can drop it onto an object, and it turns green. Or I can select an object. If I select material I want to assign. See how it puts the yellow box around it? If I select that material and I go right click on an object, well it used to be right click. Um, I used to be able to say assign, actually it was this way. I select the object, I come over now and I select the material and if I right click it says assign material to selection. You see that? Okay, so if I select the objects that I have that I want to assign the green, so let me assign this the blend green, which will be a shiny green, right? And if I come over here, I right click on it, I have the object, oops, I want the object selected in my selection mode, okay, not in my vertice mode. Right click on it and say assign material to selection. And you'll see, if I come in here, I'm going to close hypershade now, I have, let me click off of it, a sphere, and then I have another one. So watch what happens when I click render now. Okay, I have a shiny sphere. And if I zoom in a little bit closer, okay, you'll notice I have a little bit of what in, the, in the, on there? A reflection. A reflection from what? The sky. The sky that I put in there. Cool, reflections, right? So let's say I don't want a reflection right now. I just wanted to show you image-based right now. Okay, for my, our guns we're probably going to use. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to delete image-based real quick. How do I delete image-based? I'm going to come down here. I could select it, hit delete there. And just like physical sun and sky, what else do I need to do? I need to open up the render settings. I need to go to indirect lighting. And if it was still listed there, I would hit delete there. But it looks like it's deleted it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try it with physical sun and sky. Okay? And this is mental ray based again. So I create physical sun and sky here. We had a lecture on this already. I have a separate video on this, right? I'm going to bring up my physical sun and sky now. I'm going to pull this aside. I'm going to square up on my objects right here. I'm going to hit render. Okay? And look at what I get. I have one of my shapes is a dull Lambert. Okay, it's flat. My other shape is a blend. And it's shiny. Okay, now, uh, yes, Josh, you had a question. Can you do both image based and physical? Um, I don't know. I've never done that. I'm sure you could probably have both in there. One of the lights might override the other. We'll have to try that. That's a good question. Okay, let me, let me finish with parts of this lecture here. I want to show you guys now, see those materials that I signed here? Let's get a better view on this, okay? I'll render that again, okay? There. So my light's blowing out the highlight on it right now. It's pretty bright, right? So what I can do is I can come in here and I can take my light. Maybe I it's pointing directly down on it. 
I'm going to turn my light a little bit now, hit render, and see what it looks like. See if I can dull it down a little bit. See, that's a little bit more dulled down. Okay? All right. Now, really quick, with my materials here, let's go back to Hypershade. Window, Rendering Editors. I'm going to come down here, pull up Hypershade again. Brings up the window here. You'll notice when I double-click, uh, the, let's start with the blend. When I double-click click the blend, in the Attribute Editor, I have all these options for it, right? Look at this. Under Color, I could change the color, right? Look at this. Transparency. Watch what happens when I slide transparency. What did my blend just do? It became see-through. So now if I go and I move this window, look at my blend. So now if I hit render, I'm going to be able to see through my blend. See that? I can now see other shapes behind it. Okay, it looks like a bubble. Tiny bubbles, right? Exactly. Okay, so let's say I don't want to mess with that. Let's say I want to change. There's all these different options here. And look at how many options are. You have specular. I can adjust the specular shading. I have reflectivity of it I could adjust. There's special effect settings. Okay. Now this one's one a lot of students like with the gun. Right? You ready? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, under special effects here, I'm going to raise glow intensity up. Just a little bit here. To 0.43. And I'm going to go hit render. Da da da! It now glows. Okay. We're not going to have any glowing in our rifles. Maybe in the second one, in the Nerf Strike one, if you want to have a laser sight, so we could assign a, assign a red blend to a shape and put a light glow on it, and now it would glow. Hold on. Hold on, Chris. Let me finish this lecture real quick. Okay? So now that's glowing too much, so I need to, gl I need to bring this down a little bit here. I'm going to bring it down to, let's say, sometimes you have to get in there and just type it manually because the slider is a little too active, right? I hit render again. You'll see the glow should, ah, it's actually still pretty high. Okay, so some of that may, might be due to the position of the light. The light is pretty close. You can see it's shining right on it. So if I move my light over a little bit in this particular direction, and maybe I turn it a little bit like so, and then I come down here and adjust my angle, and if I hit render again, now let's see what my glow looks like. It's changed the position a little bit, right? So you have to be careful with glow because there's so many different settings that are happening in here. Okay, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So if I want to turn that off, I need to come down here. Okay, I need to touch the object that I have. And here's another way I can get to that object. Instead of going through the hyper shade, see how I touch the object? The object in the attribute editor has the blend assigned to it. See that? Thanks, Maya. You made a tab for it. You assigned it there. Look. Oh, that's a lot easier. I click the tab. I come down here. I'm going to go to glow intensity, and I can turn that off. Now, if I render it, my glow is going to be gone. Okay. Also, you will notice under here, I also have, let's scroll down a little bit here. Let's take a look at some other settings. So I have transparency. I have some other, I have a bump mat where I can add some form of a texture in there if I wanted to. Okay. Um, we'll get to that a little bit later. Um, you can goof around with that if you like. You can feel free. I try to create a video a little bit later, but you can always go to YouTube and type in bump mapping, and they'll, people will have demos on that for you. But what's really important to me, if I scroll down here a little bit more, okay, um, I have some ray trace options. Refractions, those are important. Does anyone know what a refraction is? No, I wouldn't expect you. Refraction is when light is passing through a see-through surface like glass. Every time you hit one of the surfaces of the glass, that's called a refraction. So if I have a glass that has thickness to it, the light's going to hit here. That's one refraction. That's a second refraction. That's a third. That's a fourth. So I can tell the light to pass through all four. And it will create an inner reflection or an inner shadow. It'll have other um, effects by doing that. Okay. So I'm not going to click that right now. I could. I could dive into that. I have some mental ray options down here. Okay, there's tons of options, guys. This is why um, when we start getting into advanced texturing and lighting, guess what? It's a whole another category of Maya. It's a whole another world of studying. This is a basic class, an intro class. Right now, we're going to learn to assign some basics there. Okay, and we'll just stick with those. Let's see what would happen though. Let me just real quick here. Let's try the bump map. Okay. I was going to bring something up here. Sometimes we can assign 
a texture to it. So let's see if we can pull this off today. Sometimes it works good. Let me type in leather <laughs> real quick here. I'm going to go to images here. I'm going to grab this piece of leather right here. I'm going to drop this to my desktop real quick. I should put, put that in, in my project file, but for right now, I'm not going to. Let me close this. Okay. Let's come down here. Okay. Let's go to bump map. I'm going to hit that icon right next to it, and it pulls up a, a render node option where it's going to ask me, you know, do I want to create, it has some things already attract, it has a fractal texture right here, okay, it has a cloth surface, I could assign a, an image to it, there's all kinds of different options here. Some work better than others, some will not work, some will make you pull your hair out and wonder why it's not working, some can work pretty good. You just have to dive into it and you have to mess around. What I'm going to do is let me click fractal real quick here, okay. And I have a bump value setting here. Let me see if I, um, if we can get some differences here. Go to presets. Nah, fractal one here. There it is. I'm sorry. I was on bump. I wasn't paying attention. So now I've added an attribute to that. I have fractal here. I can come in here and I can add in different settings here. You see that? I can light it, lighten up the aptitude, amplitude. Excuse me. I can adjust the threshold settings of it, frequency, frequency of the design. Okay, let's just see what happens if I hit render. <coughs> Hopefully, there. Look at my little sphere now. Look at what's happened to it. I've gone in and I had a blend. Okay, so let me go back to the hypershade real quick there. Okay, let's go back under window. Let's go to rendering editors. Let's bring up that hypershade. Okay, and it's, oh yeah, I already had it open down below here. And you'll notice, look in my work area here. Okay, see, and this is, actually, to be honest with you guys, I'm not that great at the whole work area thing down here. That's a weakness for me. I had somebody that always did this for me, but I'll try to show you what I can, and I'm learning more about it. But look, there's the blend I created. You see that blend? Okay, that blend down here has a 2D texture attached to it. You see the arrow? That 2D texture goes across. That 2D texture is that fractal that I clicked, and then there's an arrow that goes to the bump map that allows me to adjust it. You see how that works? So if I come over here and touch Lambert, I don't have that set up in here. So under this work area, I have this dedicated texture set up right now for this right here. Okay? And if you click on that blend now, you can come back in here. We can still adjust it and modify it if we want. But you'll notice now I have the bump there. So if I click on the bump, that's the bump map where I told it. Now look at this. I have a depth ratio here. Let's see what happens if I bring that depth down. A bump map is exactly what it sounds like. It adds bumps to the texture. Okay? Let's see if I raise this up a lot. Let's see what it gets. Okay? Look at this. I have effects in there. I have bump map filters. I have, we call this attaching nodes. Okay? So let me render that again. Let's see what happens by bumping up that depth. Not much happened, maybe a little bit of a difference there. Uh, let's click on fractal though. That's what I assigned. So let's see what we can mess with here. Um, look at this, guys. I have color balance here. I have effects. I have filters I can put on it. There's all kinds of craziness that I can go in there and I can adjust. Let's do threshold. Let me thin it, thin it down so I barely see something. And let's adjust the. Let's see if by doing that what happens when I hit render now. See that? Let me zoom in a little bit closer for you. Okay. So, now I can't see the textures, I know. Can't see it until you render it. Let's see, when I render it now, I, I loosened up, you see? So now I have a shiny surface, and I loosened up the fractal bump map on it, right? And look at what I get now. So if you wanted to have a piece of plastic that might have a grip count on it, that's how you do it. You go in there and you have fun with this. You got to experiment. This is why I told my other class, your models for your super soaker rifle should be almost done. Because now you're going to spend the next week plus getting in there and assigning textures and modifying it. And trust me, it might as a pain in the butt. Sometimes you can assign textures to a whole rifle and you'll come back one day and you're going to open it up, and Maya has a little hiccup, and they're gone. And you have to do it all over. 
That's why we save in steps, right? And we save backups, okay? This happens all the time. So Maya has a little hiccup. But isn't that pretty cool? That texture I just created there. So if I wanted to go back and have green shiny again down here, right? So I'm going to pull up Window, Rendering Editors, Hypershade, right? When I pull this window up right here, that blend has been used now. I need to create a new blend. I create a new blend by clicking on it here. It created it right here. If I come over here and I double click on blend, it brings up the attribute editor. I click on color. I now can assign a different color to it. Let's say I'm going to assign red right now. Okay? I have red assigned. I'm going to come over a middle mouse button. I'm going to grab and I could drag that and touch the object and assign red to it. Or I could touch the object, right click on it and say assign material to selection. Okay? Now I have a blend attached there. Okay? So let's do a quick render of that and see what that looks like. Right? Awesome! Look at that red. Some material colors pick up things better. The red always picks up this sweet looking reflective uh, ability like a nice cherry paint job on an old ca classic car. Right? So I have this red. Look at that material up there I created. Right? So let's modify it a little bit. Let's have fun. Let's see what happens. I grab that leather texture down here. Right? Let's see what happens when Phil comes in here and screws with it a little bit here. Okay? So if I scroll down here, I have the special effects, right? I could put on, uh, I can make it glow up if I wanted to. There's a couple of different options that I could do. Let's, um, let's see here what some of our other options are. You have to sort of click around and see what's available to you. Okay? Um, I'm going to click on here on color. And remember, I came down here before, and this is where I added Fractal, right? Let me come down here now. Let me see if I can add an image to it. There used to have, I didn't save that as Photoshop, but they used to have, look, there's a cloud image. There's granite. Oh, they have leather already in there. You see that? So I'm going to select leather now. Okay. Now if I hit render. Yeah, baby. It's like a... Uh, it's this really shiny sort of, but the brown's doled out part of the red now, all right? Let's see how shiny it is, okay? So let's go in here. Let's see what we can adjust in here. I have the cell color. Look at that. I can switch it the other way. I can adjust that. I can adjust the creases. I have the cell size. See that? So now if I come in here and make all those adjustments and I hit render, let's take a look at that. Now, what does leather really look like? What kind of surface is leather, guys? It's a matte finished. So maybe applying the leather option to the blend wasn't the best idea, right? So what can I do? I can come back in here, and um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to come back under Hypershade, right? Rendering Editors. Let's bring back up our Hypershade here, okay? And I don't like that. I'm just going to select it right now. I'm going to Edit, and I'm going to go Delete what I have selected. See, it deleted it, right? It automatically switched it back to the base green. It just switches it sometimes to what's next to it. I'm going to create a Lambert now. I have that Lambert selected here. Okay, Lambert 3. When I go to Lambert, I'm going to click on that option right here, this box, next to the color setting. Okay, you see that? Let's say if I had, so it doesn't even matter. It's going to sign it the leather color, so I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to go down here. There's wood. There's marble, there's rock, there's a snow, there's granite. I'm going to click leather right now. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to middle mouse and drag that to my object. I'm going to click render. Let's see what happens. There. Okay, now I don't have that shiny finish. I'm going to see if I can address the crease color. Maybe make it darker. Okay, Let's see what that looks like. I'm going to come in here, zoom up a little bit, and see what my leather texture looks like. So. Some textures work better than others. Some suck, and some look awesome. This is when you get into mine, you get into shaders and all this stuff, it, it all can change, okay? But you can see you can experiment with that. If you discover something cool, there are 25 of you, there's one of me. Show me. It's how I learned that, you know, I learned this bump map on a blend, and you knock it down, it looks fantastic, right? You get that nice cratered look to it. Okay, there's some things that work good, some things that don't. Okay, all right. So let's talk about Material X now. Now we've talked about the Hypershade. I've shown you how to bring up the Hypershade. 
You can create a Blinn or a Lambert. Okay, those are the, don't start creating layered shaders and ocean shaders and all that stuff. You're getting into a little bit of craziness. But what is important if I scroll down here, you will find a wonderful option here called Material X. Okay, there it is. Or did I pass it? Right here. Material X. See that? Also above it, you'll find, let me click one of these, metallic paint. Let me click metallic paint. I created this right here. You see that? Red. And then I'm going to come down here. I'm going to create a couple of the material X's. One, two, three. So you can see as I'm touching on them here, they're creating them over here. Okay. Now watch. Everyone ready to follow? If I double click on the metal paint, it has a base color here. Let's see what happens now when I assign that to my shape here. And you know what? Let's get <laughs> let's get touchy here. Let me assign that to the oops. Oops. Oh come on. There we go. There we go. I have it assigned to there. Okay. And I'm gonna hit render real quick. Let's see what it looks like. Metallic paint. Doesn't look too metallic to me right now. Okay, that might be something for us to go back in and we might have some adjustments in some of the attribute settings to get that to work correctly. Yes, sir? Um, what material, is it, is it M or I A material X? Or? Yes, so I'm going to get into that right now. The material that I just created, so I'm not going to worry about the, some of these, we've had students that have had mi mixed success with the metallics in here. You can mess with them. But you know what? You don't even really need that. You know why? I'm about to show you material X. Okay. So we just created that. Remember, we scrolled down here. It's MIA Material X. Here it is. Now watch. When I select that, okay, if I come up here under Presets in the Attribute Editor and I select Presets, look at what comes down. Chrome, Copper, Frosted Glass, Glass Thick, Glass Thin, Glossy Finish, Plastic, Matte Finish, at Rubber. Everything you need to assign to your rifle to make it look awesome. Right? So let's start with, let's do a chrome. And then it asks me what kind of, I usually I do replace. Sometimes on the shinier ones, I might do like a blend at 75 or 90. You just have to experiment with it, right? That's chrome now. So I'm going to assign chrome up here to this. Okay? I'm going to do another one here. Let's click this one. Let's go to presets here. I want to click, you know, I want to do glass thick here, replace, right? So glass thick, I'm going to drag this, drop it to the base now. now. I really don't see anything here. That's okay. It's not going to show you until you render. You have to remember where you drop these. I'm going to come on this one here, presets. Let's go to glossy plastic. I'm going to see if I can adjust the color a little bit. Let's do glossy yellow. Yeah. So, look. Is that going to be too glossy with black in it? No. But if I bring it down here to bright yellow, put that one there. Okay. Let's hit close real quick. Let's back off a little bit. And let's hit render and see what happens. <coughs> ah, look at that, guys. The glass. Okay. I have a glossy plastic look to this. I have, look at that chrome on there, okay? Now, something else is taking place here. I'm doing a really base rendering here, okay? I can adjust the values of it in a second here. I'll show you how to do that, okay? I wonder what happened to my green down here. It disappeared. I don't know why. Let's come down here. Let's go to Window, Rendering Editors. Let's bring up our Hypershade again. And um, I can remember I can label my materials if I call it gun base or plastic piece for something, right? Whatever I want. Um, let me just, let's do a couple others. Let's see what happens here. Let's try copper. Place, grab copper and drag it onto that guy here. And I had another. Um, let's create another one here. My material X here. So this takes some time, guys. You have to go in here, you have to scroll down, you have to find it, you have to modify it, 
you change it, some things don't look as good. You have to modify the 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 um, the light sometimes. You have to modify the highlights of it. So yeah, now I can't find it because I'm zooming through. And I also need to get glasses soon. And I don't want to get glasses. I think I'm skipping over it. Let me pull this up all the way so I can see it. I should know exactly where it is. I just need to remember the spot for it. MIA Material X. Am I going too fast? So I just won't see it. <coughs> MIBs. There is sun MIA. Oh, that's physical sun and sky. Oh, come on, Phil. There. Thought I just saw it for a second. Anyone else see it? Did I pass it? There it is. It's under paint. Material X. There it is. I'm going to go ahead and just create like four or five of them. Okay. Now I have one here. Let's come here. Let's go to presets. I'm going to put that on. Let's do rubber. Let's try rubber. Place. Okay. So now I'm going to take my rubber finish. Let's see what happens if I assign rubber finish to. That was rubber here. I drag that to the base there. Okay. To that one. Um, let's try a couple on these back two right here. Let's touch this guy. Presets here. Oops. Close. Presets. Let's try um, the metal option here. Okay. Did that do that? Oh yeah, here it is. Let's try that one there. That's got metal on it. And now let's go to this one here. So this is why it's really helpful to label these so you don't forget what it, what it is. You might call this scope part of your scope or call it scope lens or you might call it handle so then you remember where you put the things okay so um, here I didn't touch what I called scope right now let's go under presets and let's try um, what's something I haven't done yet glazed ceramic I don't know what that is let's try frosted glass okay it's going to take that one here I'm going to drag that on the base there I have this I'm going to close this now, real quick here, I'm going to hit render. Look at this, see what happens now. <laughs> Notice it's taking a little bit longer now because I have a lot more textures on it. Okay. So, frosted glass is working. My rubber is doing something weird. The chrome's looking pretty cool. Let's zoom in here and see what's going on. Um, let me touch the object here. I want to come down here. And this was my rubber setting. Let's see why. Maybe there's some adjustment I need to turn down <coughs> on rubber to feel like why it's not working. Maybe I need to take down the reflectivity of it. Well, rubber can be reflective, right? Maybe I need to increase the weight setting. Maybe roughness. It needs to feel rougher. Oh, it's white. That's why. Duh. And color. Let's assign it like a blue rubber. Okay. Let's go down and hit render now from this angle and see what it looks like. Okay, look, it even picked up our sun reflection. See that? Our sun's reflecting in the mirror down below. So I'm having some problems with the rubber right now. It's not quite giving me the effect that I want it to give. So that's something where, you know, sometimes you have to get in there. You might discover something. You might do a Google search and say, how do I get black rubber? I did it last night and we got black rubber. Now I'm not getting it. So you might have to do a Google search and type in how to get good black rubber in Maya. And there'll be a link and someone will tell you how to do it. And you just go in here and you adjust the settings. And so they might say, well, colors don't work. You have to have it on black, okay? And you have to definitely go in there and adjust the weight ratio down to 0.5. And color has to be this. Reflectivity has to be down lower. There might be all these. The refraction index setting needs to be placed at 0.1. Trust me, there's tons of people that have a ton of time to figure this stuff out. And being able to just go onto the internet somewhere and see what hap what someone might get feedback on. So I'm not getting too good of a, of a rubber there, right? So I'm just going to come back over here. I'm going to go to pull up Hypershade again, okay? And I might assign it another material and just do something else. I could try to make another rubber by doing a black finish and putting a bump map on it, right? Or a fractal setting, right? There's something else I can. Let's try that real quick. Let me come over here. Let's go. I'm going to go ahead and create a fong right here, not a fong, I was going to create a blend. A fong is another, it's like a blend, it's shiny, 
How, how do they come up with these people's last names? The guy that invented Fong, his name was Fong. He's Vietnamese. Okay? The guy that invented Lambert, I think his name was like Ed Lambert. Okay? That's how they come up with this stuff. So I created a blend here, right? Where to put my blend? Let's try it again. There it is. Okay? It's up here. I'm going to select my blend here. Let's go pick a color. I'm going to see what happens if I go to like this. Um, let's go to like this darker gray here. Okay? Now I have that selected. I'm going to come down here, select the icon next to it. Let's come back over here, and um, I could do noise to it before we did fractal, right? Look, there's a cloth option there. It even allows me to upload something too. Let's let's something we haven't. You know, we didn't do noise, did we? Um, well, what I did before is I went down to fractal. And Fractal opened up that option for me. Pretty sure that's how we got there. Unless I didn't see it here, did I? No. Well, I opened up Fractal. Did you see Bump Map listed here? No. So let's go ahead. I'm going to sign it. Not Granite. Let's do, um, let's try Noise. I can adjust the noise there. Let's hit Render and see what it looks like. See if I'm getting anything out of it. I'm not. Something weird's happening with that material. I think it's the shape or something. See how that's... <coughs> you know what? It might be because it's in shadow. That's why I put that up there. Let's try it now. Still not really giving me what I wanted it to do. This is where you have to go in and you have to mess with it, guys. This is why you can't just do it overnight. It takes some time to really get in there. So now I have to come down in here. I have to go back to render settings, right? Ah, come on, mouse. I'm going to go back under hyper shade. I need to figure out what something was happening with that shape. Let me see if I just assign it another material here because I created that blend. And maybe it's just because it's, you know what, maybe it's because it's just the gray. Maybe I really need to get more of a color to it. Let's see what happens if I go yellow on that. I'm going to sign that again back here. And let me double check. Um, I did fractal before. I did noise. Amplitude. Let's try that. Okay. There. And even if I click here. See what happens when I click this open. Yeah, I can even add another option onto that as well. I can keep adding more and more, and that'll show up inside the hyper shade. But let's click render now and take a look at what's happened. So I think I'd adjust the color a little bit. Seeing it, it, it just put a little bit of a fractal setting on it. See, that's not really working too good for me. So I think fractal might work better on another surface than that cylinder. That cylinder is long and tall. It's putting some of the fractal on the top, not much around the base there. So that's something that I might decide to go in and delete. You know, that might not be the best choice for me right there. Okay, that's where the experimentation comes up. Let's do one more experiment. Let's go over here to rendering editors, right? Let's bring up Hypershade again. Let's try another blend. Let's bring up a blend. Okay, I have that blend here. Let's touch it. Um, let's go over here into color. I'm just going to throw something real quick. Let's do a red. I want to see what happens if I come down here and add in... Um, Those are wood setting that puts it automatically to a color. Let me see here. Let's do the file. Okay, I'm going to go to my desktop now. Here it's asking me for the file. I'm going to click that folder. Okay, it's, I have that leather on my desktop here. So if I click desktop, the leather, it's called Avante. So if I come down here and find Avante, where is it? There it is. Select that. I'm going to hit open. It attaches that file in there. And if I hit render right now, it should have that attached in there. You know what? I don't think I assigned the blend. So let's go back. Window. Rendering editors. Um, let's get hyper shade back up. And that's the blend there. Let me attach that to here. Let me see what happens if I attach that. So sometimes you have, you know, better days. Sometimes some things work really easy. Sometimes they don't. 
see what happens. I, for some reason, that didn't show a minute ago. There. Now it's showing. I just guess I didn't assign it. So you can see what's happening. Look at that. It looks like a little lipstick cover. It's blending shiny. And it just took that texture and applied it to it. See that? Okay. has that nice little um, shine to it. Okay. So that's some basics there. Go in there. Have fun. You know, um, you can start with a little demo like this. Just start with your rifle. Start assigning some blends, Lambert. See what happens. If you want to grab a texture or two, you can grab them. But what's really important is if you grab a bunch of textures from downline, I mean, uh, excuse me, and if you download them from online, that is, and I see how I dragged it to my desktop, you want to come back over and you want to find your folder here. So let me find my folder, 104 here, and um, I put it in here, Material X. I want to open this and under Images. I'm going to drop that image in there so I know where it is. So if I ever have to find it and it's not there again, I can find it in my folder selection. Okay. And I can go back in and continue adding more and more. So that's Material X. You know, it's a lot of fun. Um, you can get in there and just have fun with it. Try the different variations. Try copper. Try adjusting them. Try every one of these shaders or color or anything that's listed in the attribute editor has a whole slew of different adjustments that you can adjust on it. Sometimes you have to Google and type in awesome chrome for Maya and there'll be somebody up there that tells you how to use like a blend shader to what to put the adjustments at, what the light should be set at and you find something really cool. Okay, there's also, I'm going to see if I can pull this up. I'm going to give you guys next, I think I'll give this at the next class. I have this render studio interior location that has like a nice draped cloth behind it. So when you guys go to render your rifles, you can assign all these materials and the cloth acts as like a nice backdrop and it makes the gun stick out. And we'll take just the render of the gun and we'll we'll place that in the Photoshop file that'll give you and we'll have our critique. Okay? Alright, so let me go ahead and wrap this lecture up. I'll record this so you guys can take it with you. And you know what, just to go over it real quick and review, we talked about we had to go to window, rendering editors, we had to pull up the hyper shade. Okay? Oops. Stay there. My mouse is real touchy. Once I get Hypershade open, I have a material selection here. I have a work area here. I come down in here and I can create blends. I can create Lamberts. And if I scroll down here, I create the, the Maya Material X. Okay. And once I create them, I double click them. I go into the Attribute Editor. I adjust them and modify them. Um, I have to make sure, watch what happens, guys, if I render this in Maya, render this in Maya software. That's what happens. These are made to work in Mental Ray. Okay? Mental Ray. If I click that. Another thing, just to throw at you at the very end here, are my render settings right now. Remember this in common here? My render settings are real low res right now. I'm at 640 by 480. I can boost that guy up to 720 right now. Okay, also under quality settings here. Um, there's a certain thing to have that I went over with a student last night that works really good for Mental Ray. I'll, I'll go over that really quickly with you right now. It'll be inside the video for you. You want to make sure your quality presets. I used to put this on a production when I would do my final. And let me show you what happens. When you do a final, it renders a really nice high res version. The problem is, is it can take a lot of time see the size of the image. I'm much more high res. It's going to pick up all little bits of detail. See how much clearer it is? Now there's something happening. I'm on the sh which is sort of cool. Look at that chrome now on production quality. Yeah, baby. Awesome, huh? But you'll notice how everything's dark. Does anyone know why it's dark? Because I'm on the shadow side. Let me see if I can come back over here and adjust. I was looking at it from this angle. Let me see if I get back into this angle right here. You know, I might need to adjust my light a little bit, like so. Bring my light over. Have a good idea of what I'm looking at. Now if I hit render again. <coughs> so those first sets of renders I was doing were just a real low res 640 by 480 render. Nothing was set on at custom. Look at the difference now. Look at the chrome. Look at that black rubber. Look at the reflection in the mirror. 
surface that I told it to be. Look at the, the quality of the render. It's much higher. Okay? It's a huge night and day difference. So one of my students was telling me there's a great video that I let him borrow, and it was on mental ray rendering. He told me if you put this at custom, okay, and then he went down under max sampling, he put this at two. Um, he put, I think we've already adjusted actually, anti-alias, we've moved that up. So where is that anti-alias, not contrast, where is it here? Adaptive sampling, that's fine. Uh, max sampling, you wanted it at two. Um, I think let's move that up, the contrast setting. <coughs> the next thing is you put under multi-pixel, right? He put this onto Mitchell, which is, don't ask guys, it's just a type of renderer that works better. And ray, ray under ray tracing, down here, he put this, oh, he put this at 666. This is actually the higher setting, which is fine. I'm going to hit close. So this is another way you can put those numbers in that I told you, and it's going to keep it at a pretty high level um, setting here. Or you can just go to production when you're all finished. There's not, these machines are pretty fast. Production doesn't take too long. And you get a really good idea. Now you'll notice you have to be careful. Look at what the Chrome's doing. It's reflecting into this. You see that? There's some differences happening on there. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. So that wraps that up. Let me go ahead and pause this and I'll get the video going for you.